so the committee started off on the 8th of November by asking us certain questions on how the um, untruth came to be in the speech in the first place, right? And um, and it was put to her um, by Mr. Singh that, that actually he had written on the draft that she needed to substantiate that paragraph. And she, she said her response was that she did not process the gravity of that. And she thought that it was enough that she believed that the anecdote was true. And then um, she was subsequently asked, what about the part about following the victim to the police station? She said she did not process it properly. You know, and then, of course, um, <clears throat> we started to ask her why the draft was put up so late and so on and so forth. And, and you know, um, we started to look into, in a sense, the root causes of why such an such a, a incident happened. All right? Uh, basically, um, she ignored or was not able to appreciate the SG's uh, advice to her. Um, and uh, continue with it anyway. Okay, so so to us that was something of concern because um, how likely is that to happen in the future uh, if such a thing can happen this time? Uh, and, and we also noted that um, she, she, she was saying that uh, further down the page that um, because of her age, um, she has imposter syndrome and that she uh, will not speak unless she's very sure of something. So we also noted from that that she was trying to attribute her actions to her age. Okay, and then uh, over the page, uh, we did ask her some questions about um, the fact that, uh, you know, she, since she says that she's in a psychiatric, I mean, not psychiatric, so has some psychological needs, that uh, it was important for her to address those issues. So, um, and, and, and to ask what she had been doing to address those issues. And we noted that the documents that she submitted to us were actually uh, of a therapist that she had seen in October 2021. So our question was, what about the therapist that you saw prior to that? Why are they not producing reports? And it's only this most recent one that's producing a report to say that she shows symptoms of PTSD. Um, and, and finally, we also tried to ask her why she feels she needs to, to stay on. And that will be at the last page of, of my typewritten notes. Uh, she says she can understand why some people think that she should resign. But if she does not show that she can turn the matter around and contribute, there will be repercussions on her personally and also how people view minority women. All right, so that is her, her thinking. Now, um, if I can move on to the... Uh, second interview that we did with her, which was on 29 of November. First of all, throughout this interview, she was crying uh, most of the time. Uh, I, I can imagine that she's under a lot of stress, but this was the fact. And um, she started to the meeting, but she called for the meeting actually, the second meeting. So she tried to talk about the work that she had been doing uh, as an MP on the ground and so on. And if you look at the second page, I mean, we the committee actually wanted to come back to the main issue. To, and, and therefore, that was why on the second page, we asked her near the top there, why, why was she bringing all this up? And she said that she had to build her confidence and so on. Okay, so uh, we then, after she finished what she wanted to tell us, we then went into clarifications again to, to find out again more about the incident and what caused the incident on the 3rd of August to happen. So um, she said that she was asked, I mean, the original draft that she put up of that speech, which was, I think, two days before the, the, the motion itself, that anecdote was not in the first draft. And then her explanation was that she was dissociated and she did not realize what she was doing and, and she had gone for therapy. So that was a, a worrying to us because what she was basically saying, as far as we could understand it, was that she was doing things without thinking about what she was doing. Uh, then later on, when we went further down the page, on page two, I asked the question whether she has ever accompanied any victims to the police in Singapore because that part, to me, was not very clear because she had said that she had not accompanied that victim that she, the anecdote was about, but asked her whether she had accompanied any victims to the police in Singapore, and her answer was, I didn't go with them inside, but I dropped them off. And then they were my friends. And then she went on to say, but this didn't happen in Singapore, but I've done it in Australia. You know, So we were trying to grapple with really what, she, what was the truth. You know, As far as this whole episode was concerned, we were very unclear. Uh, the other issue which which cropped up, I think, during this uh, second interview to me was that 
she appeared to um, not be very careful about the things that she was doing in general. So, for example, she had uh, apparently among her teammates talked about the fact that uh, she should not leave the team because if she left, there would be a by-election triggered. And uh, I asked her how she came to that conclusion. She said she was informed by someone that this was the case. And I asked her whether she had checked. And she said she had checked. And, she ch and her checking revealed that the Prime Minister can decide whether a vacancy in a GRC would trigger a by-election. So uh, we all know the law on this is quite clear. And this also raised alarm bells with me because, I mean, I think as an MP, you would be expected to check such a thing before perhaps believing what people tell you or, or you know, at least do your research. So, so this, this was another uh, area of concern. I wasn't sure of her ability to actually exercise due diligence to check matters and so on. So um, she continued. Uh, uh, and the, the, subsequently, the, uh, the part that follows is actually questions about whether she had wanted to, to resign as an MP or to resign as a CC member earlier on. And um, initially, she said that she had uh, not told anyone that, but it, later on, upon further questioning, it, it emerged that she agreed that she had actually drafted some um, messages uh, earlier on intending to, uh, wanting to resign for one reason or another. You know, so... Um, this was another cause of concern. Um, Mr. Singh highlighted to her that she had messaged him on the 4th of August to ask whether she has a future in the party. So, so I, in that sense, in terms of emotional stability, we felt that there were causes for concern on our side. Um, finally, towards the end of the uh, interview, pages 5 and 6, I... Uh, just touch base very briefly with her uh, on whether the, at that time the Committee of Privileges had contacted her uh, and whether she was making any preparations for the committee. So she said that the committee had not contacted her at that point, which was, I think, 29 of November, had not contacted her at that point, but she was preparing for the COP. Her lawyer was going through the matter with her. Uh, and, and last of all, from these notes, I'd like to also highlight um, on the last page, page 6, that and this concerns the 3rd of October meeting, which I wasn't present at, between uh, Mr. Singh and, and her. Uh, and the question was put to her by Mr. Singh as follows. It says, before the October session, I met you and I told you that it was your call. Did the need to tell the truth in Parliament occur to you? And her response was, yes, but I was consumed with guilt in my own experience and I thought that it wouldn't come up. That's her response. She, she was consumed with guilt in her own experience and she thought that it wouldn't come up. And uh, Mr. Singh says to her, you can't lie, right? And then she says, yes. So, I mean, as far as the 3rd of October meeting, I was not there, but that was her response to the disciplinary panel when asked why she didn't tell the truth before uh, at the October sitting. She said she was consumed with guilt in her own experience. That was what she... she if I may just ask a quick question yeah. since you raised this... Uh, in that last page you mentioned about regarding the conversation on 3rd October, on the top uh, where Mr. Pritam Singh said, before October session, I met you and told you it was your call. Right. So meaning that it was really up to her to decide what to do. I don't know the context, but he phrased it in this way. From, yeah. from this, it would seem to be that uh, it's really for her to decide, which is, I she guess, has to decide, yeah. if you follow from this, when he said that I will not judge you, is that you decide what you want to do, I will not judge you for that. Would that be a fair interpretation? I as wasn't, you yeah, I, I wasn't. No, you were not there. Yeah, I wasn't there. But so saying that as from what he's recounted here, as you recorded, and what we know now of what had been said specifically, this would be a reasonable interpretation of it? Chairman, Chairman, I think it would be fair to put to her that that line comes from which witness? Uh, because there's differing... Came, uh, that, that line came from Mr. Pritam Singh himself? who said to take ownership and responsibility, I will not judge you. If you... Yeah, so... In, so in, I'm just in, asking, in the, in based the, on what Mr. Pritam Singh has shared, and given what he said now here, would that be a reasonable interpretation that it was really left to her uh, to decide? Well, I mean, I, I, I don't know what he said because I put myself on a news block out for the last Understand. few days. Um, but in any case, I mean, the it is recorded line, as it is recorded. You, yes. The specific line he said was to take... Uh, 
ownership and responsibility, yes. and I will not judge you. So these few lines came out across clearly as is what he conveyed. Okay. And I'm just asking you that based on what you've recounted here, um, it would suggest that the option was left to Ms Khan to decide. What I, think, I think it also has to be looked at the whole context because, you know, what we recorded here was that I told you it was your call. Did the need to tell the truth in Parliament occur to you? Then she says, yes, but I was consumed with guilt and own experience and I thought it wouldn't come up. Now, of course, she's saying... She's not saying here, you gave me a choice, so I made that choice. She says, I was consumed with guilt and own experience and I thought it wouldn't come up. And he says, but you can't lie, right? And she says, yes. So it has been taken, I think, in totality to understand. Like I said, I wasn't there, but this is what I, I recorded. 